there game developers, it is me, Titan Hex, and I am back with yet another tutorial. This time we will be doing common events. So let's go ahead and get into the event commands right over here. Super useful, super good for uh, what we're about to do. Now, the trick here is to um, find common events right here. So common events, it has two different parts. One part is of course called up here in events. And then the most important part is in the database, which is where we're gonna jump to right now. So let's go ahead and head into the database, jump over to common events. And as you can see, we have a whole common events panel right here. In order to create and remove common events, it's just like variables. We simply remove the amount uh, using change maximum and increase it by increasing the maximum there are. This gives us more common events to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and um, just sort of start our first common event. So first, before we even jump into that though, we're going to explain how to call a common event. So you just go here into event commands and on that first tab under flow control is common event. We click it and then we choose which common event we call. So basically a common event works by executing uh, some code that we create inside of the database. So this is all going to take place and then it's going to call the common event at which point it's going to jump to the database or it's going to look in the database, find the common event we're referencing and then execute the code inside of this common event before returning back to its um, for returning back and executing its own code here. So now, as you can see, it's calling the common event, executing this, um, executing this first, calling the common event, executing what's inside of the common event, and then coming back here and finishing its work. That should be pretty easy to understand. Um, call common event works just like that. So I'm gonna show you why call common event is so useful. And I'm going to do that by creating a door uh, a door event here. So first we're going to grab a door right here. Looks good. And we're going to go ahead and create a door open sequence. So the way it works is we do turn left. We wait five frames so that you can fully appreciate the change. Wait five more frames after turning right. And then finally turn up and then allow the object to be walk through. So as you can see, turn left, wait, turn right, etc. And so that will open a door for us. Next, we go to conditional branch. And we're going to check if self switch a is on. So we're also going to create an else inside that. And we're going to go ahead and move this here inside that one. That should be perfect. So set move route player. All right. So at the end of this little thing where it opens the door, uh, we're going to turn the self switch a on. And that means that this will no longer happen because self switch a is on. So if the door is open, we can no longer activate this part of the code, which is pretty much all of it. So what we're going to do is create another one that turns self switch a off. And before even doing that, we are going to do set move route. We're going to turn, open the door back up. So turn right, we're going to wait five more frames, turn left, we're going to wait five more frames, and then finally turn down and turn through off. So now the door is solid, you can't walk through it, and it closes back. So now we have this nice little um, door, and it opens and closes as needed. So of course I can go here, walk through um, after opening it, and I am going to call that good. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this five times or four times, and then I'm going to go ahead and test it out. So now I have four different events, all with the same thing. All I've done is copy and paste them. Um, and they really can all be put the, the, the thing I want to show you is that they can all be put inside one single common event and all we have to do is call the common event. But right now, since we have it in four, 
um, we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show you that we made a mistake and what happens is our player will be the one that all that stuff happens too so now our player is has through on um, he spins so see spins backwards and forwards not what we want this is yeah this is definitely not what we want and now in order to fix it we have to go through all four of these common or these four events and change everything um, to this event and all because we made a mistake we got to do this eight different times changing this however with the use of common events I just need to paste it inside here and it's fixed so I'm gonna name this door open and now all I have to do instead of all that work is just call the common event uh, right here in one common event door open and that's really all I need to do so now I've made all my work so much simpler it's all here and I can anything I want to change I can change that this door is actually this or maybe it's this I can change it and it'll still work all the same and that's what's amazing about common event is just how well it works for a whole bunch of things I can I can basically use this every time I make a door and I can even edit it to have a sound effect so maybe I throw on the door open sound effect so play sound effect door where okay it's all the way down here boom so now the door sound effect will play and I can open up all of these and they'll all do the same thing uh, and it should make my life a lot easier I, all I had to do to add a door open sound effect to every single door is just change that one thing in the database and it's so easy to keep track of and it's so easy to use as you can see works perfectly looks great neat little thing right there how cool is that so yeah now we have this awesome little common event um, we're gonna go ahead and change up a little bit more. So, as you can see, common event is great when you have a whole bunch of duplicate um, events and you you can really change how much work you have to do. If you just take the duplicated events and just edit it, not every single event is going to work that well with common events, but there's a lot of systems and special things you can do. Um, I can make it so that I can have five different stations and there's craft their crafting station so I can just call up the crafting menu from this common event and anytime I need to edit anything or change anything all I have to do is change this instead of finding every single crafting station on the map and <laughs> editing it that way that would be a nightmare this makes things so much easier and I definitely recommend doing this so now let's go ahead and um, take a look at the triggers so the trigger in the common events, uh, typically if all you're doing is calling the common event, like so from an event, um, here on one. So if I'm just calling a common event this way, I really don't need any kind of trigger, but there are special um, common events that can run forever on all maps. So if I set a parallel uh, common event and set it to a switch, like the timer system switch, I now have a, um, a common event that is constantly running, repeating all the stuff in the contents over and over on all the maps, as long as this switch is on. If I turn the switch off, it stops running. So I'm gonna show you an example of that, starting with uh, a day-night system. So I'm gonna start a day-night system, and I'm going to go ahead and make a simple wait 600, which is about 10 seconds. And then I'm going to add, change the tint screen. So I'm gonna change the tint screen to night. And then after 600 frames, I'm going to change it back to normal. There we go. So this is gonna run and it's going to sort of every 10 seconds go from day to night and then back. And the way it works is the parallel process just runs um, and it just runs through here. This keeps running 
starts back over, keeps running until eventually I turn the switch off. And I'm gonna show you that through this little crystal. So I have this crystal set up and when the day night system is on, this little crystal lights up and when it's off, it turns dark. Um, and I just hit enter on this system to make it work. So I'm gonna go ahead and play test and show you that. Meanwhile, I'll also talk a little bit more about the common events. Uh, obviously you wanna, auto runs a special one that you might not use very often. It's parallel processes that you'll typically end up using. And the thing about parallel process is that if you have too many parallel processes running at once, it's going to slow your game down, which can be, you know, obviously a bad thing. You want to avoid having too many parallel processes in your game. Um, if you have too many parallel processes, it slows things down. The best way to, to remedy that is to put as many parallel process triggers uh, together. So just trying to find ways to put all of it inside of one single common event really can save you process space. So, so find out ways you can do that, especially with the ones that have a lot of weight. See if you can't maybe make the weight um, all kind of condensed down together. It's usually these are good. That's good for systems that are constantly running on your map um, and that never will stop running. So just keep that in mind. So now I have this neat little day night system. It's very simple and we can get into more complex day night systems later on. But for now, uh, this just does something very simple. It shows us common events and how they work. Very simple, very awesome, very easy. And I have one more part of common events and then I'm gonna give you a little bonus. But for now, um, we're gonna talk about calling common events from the effects here in skills and items. So skills and items have effects and we can call common events through these. This allows us to do some rather custom and cool things. So I can call this third common event and maybe I can put something nifty in here. Um, I can make the vehicle maybe appear at our position. I can make a, so you could have a, a item that calls your vehicle, maybe your vehicle's a, um, a, a mount and you can use a whistle to call your mount. Uh, maybe you have, um, let's see, maybe you can make it so that you have a teleportation machine, a little transportable one that you can use. Uh, maybe you have a scrying eyeball that uh, every time you use it will show different random text um, or maybe has a timer. You can create a, a let's say a ball of magic that will give you magic items every time you use it, but it has a cooldown. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of very neat and nifty things. I can also change like maybe a transformation. I can change the first enemy in a battle to a bat with um, common events. So it's cool little things like that can, that can really allow me to do some neat things. For example, I can make it so Herald attacks so many tons and tons of things um, using call common event. So just keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to create a simple common event um, here in items, weapons, no, skills, no items. Here it is, pipe of power. So the pipe of power will call the third common event and it's going to create a sound effect. So play loot SE. So this is going to play a music effect here, play ME music effect. And it's just going to play fanfare one and bam. So every time I use the pipe of power, it's going to play the loot sound uh, music effect. So it's a cool little thing like that, um, very useful. Um, it buffs an ally and every time I play it, it plays the loot sound effect. Very cool. So next I'm going to, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and of course you can do way more complex and cool things than just this simple uh, 
common event that plays music. But this is a nice way to show some of the cute custom things you can do. Um, so one last thing is some things that can be fun for like roguelikes or maybe specialized uh, little systems in your game is that you can make it so that instead of just a regular item, uh, a preset item that you get, you can change it to set movement route this event. So this opens up and then we can call a common event inside our treasure chest here on four and it gives us random treasure. So now inside this, we can just create a uh, variable and we can name it random and then we can set it to a random number from one to four. And if the number is one, oh, careful. If the number is one, then it'll have one treasure in it. And if it's two, three and four, two, three and four, it'll have different items. So now we can have it where it gives us, let's say 250 gold and then shows the text message, you found 250 G. And we of course have that transparent in the middle. And we can add different things like that. So now I can add a weapon. So maybe you find a sword, you found one X sword. And I believe if I remember correctly, there might be ways to show icons now in MV. If I just hover this. Yeah, icons. So I can even show the sword icon. Cool little thing like that. Um, throw this on, change items, potion. So I can add a potion. You found one X potion and a magic stimulant as the third item. So jump down here, magic water, you found one X magic water. So now there's a one in four chance I'll get any of these items instead of just a typical item. So it makes every playthrough of this a little different and it creates this sort of roguelike uh, feeling in the game, which can of course be pretty awesome. So obviously we're gonna test it out and uh, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys that little bonus. It's a cool little extra that you can throw in. And here, watch. See, one X sword, and it'll be different every time. So that's just sort of how it works. It's a pretty cool little system. Um, I hope you come up with some awesome ways to do your own common events, find ways to use them in your game to make your game simpler, more compact, better, greater systems. Thank you. I appreciate you checking in on these tutorials. Hopefully you learned something. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, let me know what you're working on, what you're looking forward to for tutorials, um, how far along you are in your game, if you need any help. Even if I can't help you, maybe somebody else can. And more importantly, um, I do have a Patreon and this helps me crank out these tutorials for you. It helps me um, come up with awesome games and show you just what this stuff, the engine can do. Uh, maybe some fun stuff for you to play. And there's always, there's awesome rewards that I, I, I have for anybody who wants to be a part of my Patreon. So again, thank you. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial.